Hello, hello everyone. Today I will be showing you something quite different. Today I was invited to take part in the submarine beta test on the TST server. Not the PTS, not the live, but a completely separate game instance designed just for testing the upcoming submarines. Now as you can see from the gameplay, it's all tier 6 and there are some UI issues in the replays but the basic gameplay that is displayed should be quite clear and should become quite obvious to you right now. I'm playing the U69, a German submarine, tier 6, and all my opponents will be tier 6 as well, since that's the whole concept of this. Now, what I'm doing right here is I'm sending torpedoes at this Fuso. Now, worth keeping in mind is that these pulses you keep seeing me send out are actually a way to enhance your torpedo attack. Let's start with the basics. The submarines are extremely squishy. They have basically no health at all. They move at full speed on the surface and underwater. Now this is something that can be immersion breaking for some, but honestly, uh, the more you look at this, you'll probably understand why they can move so fast underwater, because these things get devastated extremely easily in this game. You have two sets of torpedo launchers, well, at least in the U69, there might be different torpedo sets later on, depending on ship type and so forth. Um, the only time when you move slower is when you go into periscope depth. You basically lose all your speed, and this is the only mode where you can attack. And what you do is you send out a torpedo, and then you send out the pulse. You see the pulse I'm sending out right now? And there's basically these two points on ships that you want to hit. You want to hit the very tip of the bow and the very end of the stern. If you manage to hit them, you get one of those hit markers. That was a miss, for example. The earlier one was a hit mark. If you manage to hit both of these points, you get bonuses to your torpedoes. If you hit one point, your torpedoes become tracking which means your torpedoes start homing in on the target. Not too aggressively, but they will actively turn and chase your target. If you manage to hit both of the points, both the bow and the stern, you get two hit markers, and this turns your torpedoes into extremely scary, because they ignore the torpedo protection and they can citadel the targets, which means you can do some really, really devastating strikes, even with only one or two torpedoes. So... The submarine threat, the power it has, is great. But there are multiple downsides to this. First of all, when you send out one of these pings, one of these um, bleep, uh, beeps that basically lock you onto the target, you get spotted on the minimap. Not only do you get spotted on the minimap, but a small pulse is sent out from where you were last known position on the minimap. Now, I'm going to get into this more later, but this might be an issue especially for the average player because people kind of struggle to pay attention to the minimap. Another thing to keep in mind is capping. The concealment on the subs is great, especially when, um, well, even on the surface your concealment is only 5 kilometers, but you can only cap objectives if you are on the surface. If you are periscope depth or if you are underwater, you can no longer cap. So you got to choose when you go to cap an objective, you got to choose in this case, for example, I could sit here and cap, but I choose to instead strike this upcoming target. Now, once again, you can't see, but you get a similar torpedo lineup as you get in a DD. You know, the usual white line that you line up on the target and you launch your torpedoes, but then there's the addition of sending out these waves. I can put a clip um, in the comments below in case you want to see what it looks like on the live server, since there are some UI elements missing in the replay. I managed to hit this nose, I get the first ping. And I managed to hit his stern, I get the second ping. That means you see the torps have turned into these blinking red evil looking things. Uh, that means not only are they homing, they will also ignore his torpedo protection. And well, the damage that these things do now is pretty insane, especially for tier 6 torpedoes. I'm going to send out my second set of torpedoes, pinging his nose. And then let's see if we can get a ping on his stern as well. Now... The torpedo reload is extremely long, and you don't really have any other tools. You have no main guns, um, you have no secondaries, you have nothing. Once these torpedoes are launched, that's pretty much it. Um, they might seem powerful right now, but trust me, there's plenty of ways to deal with submarines as it is right now. I will show you the perspective of a battleship fighting these and of a DD fighting these. And DD in particular is especially powerful when taking on this ship. 
And in this case, I sail around a camp, securing it for our team. Can't strike anything, can't really spot anything. You don't really want to be spotting anything. And I've specced into RPF because I think it's incredibly important to have on these submarines because, well, especially when you're being actively hunted, knowing where your hunter is coming from is such a valuable tool. In this case, I know there was a Bayern behind this island and RPF is basically pointing right in front of me. So I'm going to take the risk of surfacing here and the plan is to hopefully catch uh, whatever ship is here, most likely the Bayern, catching him completely off guard. Note that I have no vision of what's actually going on there until I go into either periscope depth or surface. In this case, I choose to go periscope depth and I do catch the Bayern, hopefully off guard. Now, should this Bayern have HE loaded, this would actually have been a significant risk. I will show you later why, but because this thing has no armor and because HE deals massive splash damage, which the ship eats, it can do huge devastating strikes to submarines. I drop both of my torp sets and I dive underwater. You note that without the lock-on bonuses, the damage from these torps was actually not really that impressive. And now we got a huge cooldown and we can't really do much else except run away. I want to highlight here just how beautiful this underwater water world is and the fact that they modeled all of this. I do actually quite enjoy this and I enjoy the feel that it gives to these submarines because you can see the muzzle flashes, you can see the shadows, they model everything underwater. It came at a pretty big cost of performance though. I've had some significant FPS issues on this map uh, dropping down to 30s, 40s on an extremely strong PC. So, so far this submarine test is very, very PC heavy. Now, here's an example of what happens if you get, become a bit too eager when it comes to hunting these um, battleships. As you see here, the Farragut decides he's gonna hunt me down. And DDs are extremely good counters to subs. I ping him to get the first lock on. I'm gonna try to get maybe the second lock on as well. He dodges it, but I do land one torpedo. But that's all my torpedoes used. And now he's going to close the distance. And this is a situation, well, basically, if you end up in this situation, if no one kills the DD, you're basically toast. Um, it's not even a question of maybe, perhaps. You're almost guaranteed toast. You might get away, perhaps if I was point sailing another way, perhaps if I didn't try to juke him by going through, basically, his death charges, I might have a chance. But once you end up in this situation, it's not even close. It's just not even close. You can see the depth charges falling into the water and they have huge area effect, just gigantic area of effect. He basically one shots me instantly and the sub gets killed. So these things are monumentally squishy. And it's not, it even works against what are considered like, for example, on enemy team right now, I know they have Flambas in a submarine and he's a competent player. Uh, and I so just saw him dip under the surface in front of me. So I'm just gonna go rush him. I'm just gonna go take him out because I'm confident that I'll be able to juke his torpedoes uh, because I'm playing the Farragut, which is a very agile destroyer. I drop torps on the battleship and now I just start closing the distance. I get an UI indicator of where the uh, submarine was last seen. And if I do enter that circle and the follow-up circles, my ship will automatically start dropping death charges on this last known position. He surfaces, he wants to try, instead of running, he wants to try to take the fight against me. And this is a mistake, because if he doesn't want to drop instant to kill me with these torpedoes, I'm weaving back and forth, and I can see him launch them. I managed to dodge it though. He launches his second set as well. I dodge both sets of torpedoes and now I basically just park on top of him and you can see the depth charges being dropped and Flambas basically gets killed in a couple of seconds very, very easily. So I finish the Fuso. The firing penalty is a bit frustrating here, of course. I tried to smoke up, but then I remembered the firing penalty will actually keep me spotted. But that wasn't. That was two examples of just how powerful DDs are against these submarines. Um, if you don't manage to land some god tier torps on them, or if you don't have your team helping you out, they will quite easily kill you. I say it feels like taking a dump on them because that's basically all you do. I'm not sure I'm really a big fan of how automated this mechanic is because, well, once again, here's another DD or another submarine. Sorry, that was spotted. He's dropped some torps my way. I'm gonna weave between the torpedoes, dodging them, and now he's in huge trouble. 
Now he really is in just huge, huge trouble, and I don't really see any. He drops another set of torps. This time, they are, I weave around them, and just like earlier with Flambas, this other player is also in huge trouble, and it's because he's nosing towards me because these are these sub submarines only have nose-mounted torpedoes. He doesn't really have any way of disengaging anymore. I deal some splash damage to me to him. He tries to dive to avoid, but you can see the. Death charges being dropped all around, and soon we will start scoring the hits, as you can see. And this is another submarine killed. So these ships are, these deed, these submarines are incredibly squishy, and you have to play incredibly safe to try to survive in them. Now, this actually applies to battleships as well. You saw me delete BBs earlier quite easily. Well, it actually goes both ways. Um, in this case, I know... Actually, I want you guys to keep pay attention to the minimap. Did you see that ping on the minimap? That very small white circle that just expanded? That's the only feedback you get. You saw another one? That's the only feedback you get that a DD is pinging you. Now, in this situation where I know that he's there, and I know that he's pinging me, and I got HE ready, I can... Uh, I'm aware that these torps are coming. But I think the signal, the ping signal, is far too small. It's far too unnoticeable because I only notice it when I'm literally staring at it and paying attention to it so I know that it's gonna pop up uh, in the middle of the heat of the battle it's almost impossible to notice that thing like especially like I look at the minimap a lot so I kind of notice it but for the average player paying attention to that small kind of ping never gonna happen worth noting is that the indicator does tell you how deep these subs are 50 meters below surface. So in this case, shooting right now would actually do nothing because they're so deep under the water. But the other submarine on the right will actually start rising. And we can use, we can shoot him as he starts rising towards the surface here. Uh, once, I'm not sure how close to the surface they have to be for you to hit. But in this case, uh, we're about to lose vision of him. So I'm just gonna throw some volleys out. So, but if you have HE loaded, you can do huge damage to subs, even with just blind fire, just like a blind fire smoke, in this case you blind fire the ping on the minimap. Um, you can do significant damage to them quite easily, but the ping indicator is, in my opinion, just far too unnoticeable. It's really hard to keep track of. At the end of the battle, when there's not many ships around and you can look at the minimap a lot, not that big of a deal, but in the start of the battle, in the middle of all the action, it can be quite nasty to keep track of. Another thing I probably want to highlight is that right now there is no way for submarines to fight other submarines and I actually don't like this at all because um, there's it leads to really dumb situations where submarines are literally just ramming each other. Um, you, you can easily dodge underneath torpedoes so even if both of you surface and you torp each other then you can just dive underneath each other's torps. It's like this infinity battle. Um, it ends up being honestly quite silly, and it feels quite silly. But my initial opinion is it's not as bad as I thought, but I have no idea how on earth they expect to be able to balance this class. Because right now, if you don't have DDs active, like if you don't have friendly submarine spotting or DDs hunting or whatever, if you're a battleship stuck fighting a submarine, it's really not a fun experience. It's really not a fun experience. Like, um, you get these homing tracking torps that ignore your armor, that chase you around the map. Um, it needs work. It needs a lot of work. That's my early, That's my first impression. Uh, I don't see how on earth they're gonna manage to balance this whole class into the game. Early feedback though is, please make the ping indicator better. Please give me some sort of ability to maybe torp other subs underwater. It doesn't have to be easy, but maybe make it a possibility. And other than that, I'm gonna have to play some more to make up my mind. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed.